Welcome, sit down, have a seat. So, you have also been exposed to Heilung and have had that odd feeling stir within you and now you wonder why, what and how that is? Well, friend, that is because not only have you been exposed to the workings of a shaman, no, you have been exposed to the workings of Kai Uwe Faust. Please do sit down, get comfortable. I will tell you the true story of Kai, the shaman of Heilung, and you will not only receive answers, but more importantly, several new questions to explore. The tale commences in the heart of Germany, where Kai was born and raised in a Christian household amidst the countryside. A household where Kai was taught the importance of rituals such as house prayer, church visits, the dangers of watching TV, and the importance of reading books. Despite his upbringing, Kai embodied the essence of nature and spent most of his days exploring and connecting with the lush forests, ancient caves, stone circles, and the expansive fields that surrounded him. Kai's natural curiosity and thirst for knowledge drove him to develop his understanding of the intricacies of the past, such as the history of the land, his ancestors, but critically, it led him to question everything, including the Christian religious practices of his family. The family tried to do their best to be open and to answer the many questions and curiosities from Kai. But to their dismay, it could not stop Kai slowly but surely removing himself from the teachings of the Bible. Instead, he immersed himself in books discussing the mysteries of the world with an emphasis on the Iron Age. Throughout his teenage years, this conflict of separation with the teachings of the Bible intensified, putting a heavy strain on not only the relationship between Kai and his family, but also Kai's relationship to Christianity and the surrounding society. The result was a young man caught in a spiral of destructive behavior and heavily occupied with diving into the subject of Satanism. This state of chaos was taking its toll on young Kai, not only on his mental health, but physical health as well, in the shape of a psoriasis-type skin disease that caused maddening irritation, itching, and rashes. His girlfriend at the time did not share Kai's passion for black metal, Satan, and darkness, but rather shamanism, healing stones, and runes. Kai viewed her spirituality with amusement and viewed those weird shaman guys with their drums and incense as crazy. But Kai was ill, and nothing so far had worked, so he followed his girlfriend's advice and gave shamanism a try. So, Kai went to one of their sessions. At the session, the lead shaman requested that one who was in need of healing step forward and be a part of the ritual which allowed for the performance of the wanted trance journey. Kai had nothing to lose, so he raised his hand and volunteered. Another ritual participant 
laid down flat on the ground, spreading his arms like a cross. Kai was asked to rest his head on one arm, and the shaman would rest his head on the other. The drumming would then start and continue for the duration of the ritual. But besides that, nothing really happened. Everyone else left the incense-filled room, except from Kai and the shaman. The shaman then approached Kai and informed him of a 21-day cure that he was to follow if he wanted his skin to heal. The cure was quite specific, clear, and a bit weird. You should go out in the morning for 21 days and put the morning dew on the infected places on your body. Kai was dumbfounded and spurted out. Is that it? I have nothing else to say, the shamanic worker stated and left Kai. So there Kai was, standing in his heavy boots, all dressed in black, with his spiky belt, confused to no end. But Kai did what was asked of him. He woke up early and started applying the morning dew to his body. And to his disbelief, it worked. It visibly started healing his sickness. Kai only made 18 days out of the 21. The sickness was gone. 10 years of pain and frustration was gone. And it did not return. And at the end, the result was a young man with a healed body, but a mind blown completely away, shocked that these humming, drumming, shamanic weirdos were capable of such things. This event changed his worldview forever and sparked the interest and passions that he has to this day. The incident caused the life of Kai to, once again, shift direction. The experience made Kai leave his prejudgment ways behind, and he adopted a humble approach to the world and spirituality. He decided to learn more about it and became a close friend of the shaman and the amazing group of people whom the shaman had gathered around him. They spent a vast number of hours gathered around campfires, traveling and studying. Kai even assisted the shaman on multiple workshops and healing sessions. In short, Kai, slowly but surely, was taught the ways of shamanism, which eventually would lead him to be able to wear the title of shaman himself. But the deep dive into shamanism was not the only life-altering choice Kai made. In his early 20s, he quit his secure and coveted job as a builder in a concrete factory, while the unemployment rate in Germany was at an all-time high. Are you crazy? You're throwing away your life. Why are you ruining yourself? was common sentences presented to Kai. But Kai had been reborn and knew he had to do something that really resonated with him and went along with his actual interests. This new start, this new journey, resulted in him meeting another key figure in his life in the shape of a tattoo artist by the name Astrid Köpfler, who offered Kai an apprenticeship. She was an amazing teacher, strict but fair, just the type that Kai needed to help him move forward. In this artistic field, Kai was allowed to express and develop his inner artist, and he ended up being one of the world's best Viking ink tattoo artists. He even published a book on the matter in 2013, 
named Nordic Tattoo. This talent for Viking ink allowed him the honor of receiving a guest spot at Kunsten på Kroppen in 2008, the world's oldest Nordic tattoo studio placed in Copenhagen, Denmark. Two years later, that guest spot turned into a full-time employment and in 2015, Kai became the owner and permanently relocated to Denmark. Kai's new life in Northern Europe, Denmark, meant he now had the ability to visit many of the historic sites he had read about as an adventurous child. Sites which had kindled his passion for Nordic history and mythology, and he started to devote more and more time to the topic. As a part of his shamanic training, he had also started writing, a common practice to help one's sense of the fleeting images and impressions one would get while journeying during trance work. What started as factual accounts quickly developed into different poems and short stories. An example of this is to be found on Heilung's newest album, Drif. The track Keltentrauer, which is based on one of Kai's earliest poems made about 20 years ago, which tells the story about the clash between the Celt and the Romans. In the beginning, the poems was based on more common languages such as German and English. But as his skills in language developed, he started to focus more and more on the ancient languages of Gothic, Old Norse and Old High German and how they could be employed to take his work in poetry even further. A passion which later would translate into the many songs of Heilung that we all know and love. While Kai was very much aware of the power of sound and song due to his shamanic background and experiences, he never thought of it as an option that he would be presenting or performing any of his work for the public in the future. But the weavers of fate had further plans for Kai. As the manager of the Nordic Tattoo Studio, Kunsten på Kroppen, Kai went to a local Viking market to promote his business. And here, as had been the case many times in the past, he met another individual, which would change his life forever. This individual was Christopher Juhl, the experienced music producer and owner of Lava Studios in Copenhagen, which specialized in Nordic traditional music, a meeting which would end up transforming the life of Kai once again in ways he would have never thought possible. We hope you enjoyed this first part of Kai's story, a story that still has many chapters to be told. Let us know your thoughts in the comments and what story you believe should be told next. Vi ses næste gang. Hej hej!